Sup, 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 guys, we're here for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. Welcome to Let's Talk, where today we'll be talking, is Konami making the right moves or improving their products in general? Are they are they doing better than they did this time last year? And I think it's an interesting topic, to say the least. Now, just fair warning, I've said this a few times, this is going to be scheduled to come out because I'll be at Comic-Con New York when this is getting released. So, if this talk is, you know, Let's Talk is a little bit shorter than usual, that's pretty much why, but I want quality over quantity is kind of my thing. I don't want to just give you quantity, I want to give you quality. So recently, I've been sitting down thinking, holy crap, look at all these great reprints we've been getting. Yes, there's room for improvement, yes, rarity hikes are a bitch, but seriously, two secret rares per box, a bunch of supers, you know, some ultras, everything's going pretty damn smooth. Even the Duelist pack was a lot better than it typically is. Again, a lot better than what it typically is. But, recently, because today it comes out, the Legendary Dex 2, I can't deny it. They, they, they put the perfect, like, in the middle ground of competitive and casual product together to make everyone happy. To have some kind of satisfaction for everyone to enjoy the product. It's no longer just competitive or casual. I'm happy because I'm the middle guy. I like to play competitively, but I'm usually more casual because of the simple fact I don't have the time for the competitive play. I just don't. But I do like the decks. I do like doing my research. I do like seeing what tops. But this product that Konami's releasing today is absolutely fantastic for 30 fucking dollars. Blackstone, there's um, the White Stone of the Ancients, there's, I don't have it right in front of me, that's pretty much why I'm saying it that way. You have Ties of the Brethren, you have Eternal Soul. There's so many good cards, not just for one deck, but for all across the board. And I'm actually proud to say, proud to say, that I am becoming more and more of a fan of Konami's business practice as of late. Including Super Rares... And every single pack at first seemed like it'd be a terrible idea. Pokemon sort of does this where it reverse hollows. I don't know their perfect rarity because I just open packs and enjoy it. But the point is, you, you're guaranteed to get some kind of hologram. Makes everyone happy. And those things are pretty cheap to make, to be completely fair. And Konami doing super rares is stepping up their games. Their super rares are pretty much their equivalent to rares. Rares are harder to get than super rares now because... You can get tons of super rares or something along those lines. He kept the prices down. Granted, things like Pod Desires are still expensive, but that's because of secondary market. That's because the player base is willing to pay it. That is because player base is demanding for more. Konami puts out so much, and obviously we still want more of it because it's fucking amazing. That's how it is. But I gotta be completely honest. September was will look to be a terrible month for Yu-Gi-Oh! in general, because the only release that we had was a Duelist pack. This month, we have the Legendary Dex 2, and we have the two Structured Decks coming out that give us Magna Warriors and ABC. The two weeks that follow after the two Yugi and Kaiba Decks come out, of course, we have Invasion Vengeance and the Destiny Soldiers pack, both of those being semi-meta defining. You have one that's going to give us Tree Toad and all the stupidity that it brings to the table and the other that's going to give us Dark Lords. I know what people are going to say. Dark Lords are not going to break out in TCG. You're probably right, but still got to mention it. The only thing that I do have to say Konami kind of fucked and dropped the ball on, there's no other way to phrase it, is pushing the DD deck all the way back. I said this multiple times. I'm not a huge fan for that DD deck. I know that, you know, there's a big fan base for it, number one. And yes, of course, you want it to be meta. I completely understand. And what they should have done is, the time that they released the Fellow Grand deck, they should have just released a DD deck right then and there. It would have given us a meta deck that was different than what we had. It would have been a breath of fresh air to some degree. And you would have had Blue Eyes versus DD at Worlds, which would have been fucking amazing, to say the least. But what we did get was kind of screwy so let's break it down for what we had throughout the year we've had gold series i believe we had high speed riders this year which gave us omega if i'm not mistaken i know gold series had number 38 inside of it 
which is obviously fantastic. The Shining Victories, was it? No, it's not Shining Victories. I'm being an idiot. Breakers of Shadow, whatever the set was that Blue Eyes stuff came in, that gave people who wanted Blue Eyes everything and more. Putting Blue Eyes Alternative in the movie pack was great. The only screw up with that was the main cubic card should have been. Granted, they're fixing that, but still. Giving us Subterra and Spiral is interesting. I really don't know what to make of it because, again, I'm making this video on uh, Tuesday afternoon, so I'm not... We haven't gotten any spoilers for Spiral yet, so just keep that in mind. And then, of course, we can see what's forthcoming next year, which is Janushi, DDDs, and everything else. And, of course, Ancient Gears. If we look at Konami from the OCG side, not just the TCG side, they're doing absolutely fantastic. If we look at it just from the TCG side, they're doing pretty okay. They're doing a lot better than they have. Rarities are getting better, it's easier to get cards, it's not as annoying, it's not as hard. It's not as stupid as it has been. And I will address the one thing that people probably want me to address. All in the Yu-Gi-Oh! is, you know, or if I said his name wrong, forgive me, is getting an invite to basically go see all the cards the weekend of the sneak peek. I think that's great. Because Konami's reaching out to yu gi tubers in the UK, that's a good thing. We got to have that in the US. I'm not saying that I want that. I couldn't care less in all seriousness. But what I'm trying to say is it makes it look good on Konami's part to reach out to the community. Say what you will about us Yugi tubers We have pretty much the biggest voice in the community. Some of us are a little more toxic than others, to be fair. And some of us are a little more dumb than others. I get a little dumb sometimes. But in all seriousness, it's, it's great that Konami's doing that. So from every aspect of what they're doing, we've had pretty much the biggest turnout for our nationals in ages. People were excited about the format to some degree. They wanted to, you know, 20 years of Yu-Gi-Oh, let's show our passion. It was fantastic. Pokemon's had its 20th year too. reason I bring that up is because when you look back 20 years ago, you didn't think that, that was going to happen. Konami has had pretty damn hard times, to be fair. And they've made a lot of stupid moves this year, especially with the Kojima thing. But if we're looking at the TCG side of things, they've actually shaped up quite a bit. On the second half of the year, I've got to give them credit. Their product is looking strong. Everything they're doing is looking right. If they keep this up, I think we won't have a problem when it comes to the TCG. They did, however, and I do have to address it, because I know if I don't, people are going to kill me. They did... However, well, not them, it was NAS, which is different. Again, it's, you know, the whole DN situation and going after YGO Pro, but YGO Pro is still up because it's not, you know, you don't have the download client there. That's a whole other headache that is completely separate from Konami. We should not be saying Konami did it. It was NAS on the behalf of Konami, but Konami did not give them the okay because that's pretty much Konami's boss who licensed them the stuff to make their trading cards. Just so everyone's understanding how that whole thing works. It's a really weird situation. The main th takeaway from this whole thing is that we're making our voices heard not just through YouTube videos but on Facebook and everything. And Konami's starting to open up and listen. That's how it feels. That's how it seems. Now the big things that need to adapt and get better over time besides just the products of course is the communication with the player base and stop turning off your likes and dislikes on youtube konami you know it it, it shun it it looks down on all of us it's it's a shameful thing it just is you gotta listen to feedback yes it's gonna be trolls you could just ban them and be freaking done but i mean seriously i like what they're doing when they showcase things on their youtube channel but at the same time, I can't really stand it because they don't let us comment about it. They don't say, hey, look, that looks pretty cool or, or even like it or dislike it because they shut it off. I will never take that freedom away from each and every one of you. That is your born freedom when you come on YouTube is to like or dislike something, to comment on something. I may not agree with you, but it is still your right to have that. And when, when a creator... In this case, Konami takes that away. I, I think it looks terrible on the game state. But if we're talking just about the product, yes, they're doing fantastic. It's going better than it ever has. Well, not ever has, but it's definitely better than it has been. Let's put it that way. Now, 
if we look at the ban list, because someone's going to want me to mention this, yes, I should have hit BA, it's, the deck has gone for too fucking long, I'm tired of seeing it, I don't want to see it ever again, and just chop its head off and be done. I'm sorry to the BA players out there, but you've had your meta deck for three years, and it's sickening, because it should not have gone for that long. I'm just going to sound hateful, I don't mean to. Alright, so... Let me know what you guys think about the whole thing. Is Konami improving? Are they getting better with their player base? Are they getting better with their product just in general? And just keep in mind, I'm at Comic-Con New York when this comes out. So thank you guys so much for tuning in as always and listening. And I'll see you on the next video as always. Ryu signing out. And I'll see you then. Peace!